let me then come back to Professor Muller here with me. Professor, um, firstly, uh, you, you, you have been in, in this space for quite a while, as I, as I mentioned. It depends who you listen to, because a while ago, some people were saying, well, if nothing is done by 2013, 2014 in this country, um, demand will outstrip supply where water is concerned. How, how desperate is the situation? Uh, Kulani, I think we, we, we always need to discriminate carefully about what issues we're talking about. I think the president mentioned in his State of the Nation address cases of people in uh, municipalities like Moroteli in the northwest and places further afield who wake up every morning, go to the tap, open the tap, and no water comes. Mm. Now, those people have a crisis every day that the water doesn't come out of the tap. That's a One kind of problem, it's the problem of municipal services and uh, whether they reach people or not. Uh, It's a problem that DBSA, which I now advise, is very concerned about because weak municipalities can't uh, can't fix these problems without help. Then what I think you're talking about is the bigger problem, the problem of whether the water resource, the the water in the rivers and the dams and the lakes is going to be enough to uh, meet South Africa's needs. And there again, uh, the situation is different from place to place. Mm. If you go to Nelson Mandela Metropole, they will tell you it's been really tough uh, down there because there's been real water shortages. But if you go and look outside Utenhaeg, you find they're building the pipeline they should have built five years ago. And one of the reasons they ran out of water is they just didn't do what was necessary. There was mm. water in the Orange River for them, but they chose not to spend the money uh, to, to, to bring it to, uh, to the city, and they ran out of water. Perhaps more serious is the, the situation in places like Cape Town and Gauteng, where we depend on water from quite a, a long way away. And if we run into drought conditions, we might find that our infrastructure just isn't enough uh, to provide the water we need to keep the economy running, to keep uh, water coming out of people's uh, mm. taps at their homes. Mm. But the other issue with, in relation to this is that this matter has been spoken and talked about in this country for over 30 years. Why is it that we aren't able to deal with it once and for all? You'll never deal with it once and for all, Kolani, because the, the country's growing, the economy's growing, populations are growing, standards of living are improving, so we need more water. Um, and it's also not fair to say that nothing is happening. There have been investments, you know, Lesotho has been built, there have been uh, projects in Cape Town and in, in KwaZulu Natal in a number of areas which in places like Gauteng mean that we haven't had water shortages, anything like, for instance, the electricity shortages Mm. for the past couple of decades. So quite a lot is going right. And of course, when it's going right, we don't notice it. We don't talk about it. Mm. But there is a range now of uh, areas where we can put our finger and say, uh, here are where problems are going to arise, where if we don't spend money and invest intelligence and manage properly, we're going to run into trouble. And this is an area where DBSA is working with uh, the Department of Water Affairs to identify the investments needed and say, how are we going to implement these? And more important, when are we going to implement these to make sure they're ready on time? But let's, let's do a bit of a comp- Comparison then with with other countries because also their economies are growing, their populations are growing. Uh, are there countries which are finding themselves in a pretty si- similar situation as us? Well, I always enjoy looking at the Australians. You know, I always say you should learn from other people's mistakes and your own successes. And uh, the Australians, of course, have a, a quite a similar climate to us. They sometimes exposed to very major droughts, and uh, then uh, those droughts very quickly turn into major floods. Six, seven years ago, the Australians said, uh, really, we want to protect the environment. We don't want to use more water. People must start saving more water and we can use it more carefully. We won't need to build any dams or infrastructure. They then had a six-year drought and they were running into real crisis. Uh, It was getting so bad that all the politicians panicked. They started calling for desalination plants to be built. They've spent over 60 billion rand. 60 billion, that's a, that's a large amount of money on desalination plants. And then it rained. And all of these desalination <laughs> plants are now standing idle, except that the citizens are having to pay. Just in Sydney, they're spending 500 million rand a year keeping this plant, which mm. isn't ne- needed, operational. But in, let's, let's use exactly these desalination plants. In South Africa, is it possible that there could be a period when we don't need them? And I'm saying this because uh, just generally, South Africa is among the driest countries in the world. And, and, and people are saying that we have an average rainfall of about 18 inches a year, which is uh, almost just about half of the world average of 34 inches a year. 
South Africa is a water-stressed country. People are very interested in us because we are so water-stressed. And we need to look very carefully into the future to understand where our water is coming from. And this is a job for the whole country, not just for one government department, which is why DBSA is helping. So uh, you ask about desalination. Certainly in a city like Cape Town, Probably within the next 10 or 20 years, you will see a desalination plant there to help augment the water that's available from other sources. But, you know, they can also reuse some of their wastewater. Johannesburg, Pretoria already do that. Uh, Tequini has put in uh, quite a large reuse uh, proposal, and you can reuse the water. So you effectively use the water twice or even three times. And that way you can deal with your scarcity. But that requires planning and requires very good project preparation, implementation, and management if you're going to be successful. So I've always said around the coast there's no reason for any city or town to run out of water because the sea is always there. And if you Mm. can afford the electricity for desalination, uh, you will have water. Inland, it's a different matter, and we have to plan and manage for it. Why why is a city like uh, you said the Nelson Mandela Metro, for instance, is, is in trouble? Because they didn't invest when they should have. They should have five years ago said, we can see we're running into risk. We'd better build that pipeline to bring the water from the Orange River. And they didn't. And in fact, they were panicking and and thinking of building a desalination plant. And fortunately, National Treasury said, why do we want to spend lots of money on electricity and foreign equipment when with a pipeline we can simply bring water to the city from the Orange River? I drove past it the other day. I reckon it'll be finished in three or six months and uh, that city will be secure again. Uh, but it's it's a good example of deciding what to do at the right time, not waiting until there's a shortage and then panicking, mm. but looking always ahead and panicking well ahead of time to to make sure you don't get left in, in difficulty. Let's go to our Pretoria studio then, because uh, Dr. Cornelius Reiters, Executive Director of the CSIR Built Environment, let's talk exactly on those matters then of, of deciding on infrastructure and, and implementing uh, the plans almost mm. as immediately as possible. Uh, what do you think about that in relation to South Africa? Uh, Kulani, it's very important that we look in, in South Africa as what uh, Professor Miller was saying in terms of the planning going ahead in South Africa. We must understand that uh, the Department of Water Affairs have already done uh, what they call the Old Town and City Studies for South Africa and looking at its, uh, its uh, water resources and the planning going forward. Now, within the CSIR, we uh, have tackled this problem in terms of the water sustainability flagship uh, uh, project that we're having and uh, for us in terms of our uh, assistance to the Department of Water Affairs we're looking at water quality water quantity and then water efficiency mm. and we're looking in terms of the short to medium term interventions that are needed in South Africa and then also in terms of the long term sustainability and planning of water resources in South Africa uh, what we're doing is this is in, in collaboration or is in augmentation in terms of the work that's, that's been doing with, with, uh, within the Department of Water Affairs. Um, I must say, um, uh, Tolani, uh, that already there are seven mega projects that are, un- that are ongoing in South Africa in terms of water resources uh, 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 implementation. And that is an in, uh, uh, in investment already in the vicinity of about plus minus 30 billion rand that is um, that has been invested in South Africa. And if you look in terms of what the state president uh, has announced in terms of the 845 uh, billion rand, then obviously there's a lot of more investment into the water resources mm. uh, planning and infrastructure uh, for the years to come, in particular the Umzimvuvu project in the Eastern Cape uh, um, as uh, as an example. And then the upcoming phase two of the Lesotho Highlands Water Project, particularly the Polehadi Dam, that will further augment by 150 million cubic meters the the Val uh, system in in South Africa. Okay. Uh, I'm going to come back to you, especially about the issues of quality and quantity that you've touched on there, Dr. Reuters. But let me let me come back here to Professor Muller because he made a comment, and he, among other people as well, he's also the one of the people that have raised this issue that the main challenge, perhaps, to water management in this country may very well also be, and this is central, a lack of skills and expertise as scientists and engineers emigrate uh, and leave the country, Professor. 
Well, you know, I, I, I'll stop joking about the Australians after this, but one of the people who sold them all those desalination plants was a South African who used to work down in KwaZulu-Natal. <laughs> we probably um, didn't need that scientist. We though. didn't need him to go. I wish he'd have stayed here. But at, yeah. least, at least he had fun with the Australians. Mm. I think we do have a skills shortage, and, you know, this is a general problem in all the engineering areas, and we've been talking about it for some time. Certainly the Department of Water Affairs is holding on a, 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 you know, with great effort to the last sort of few of the old engineers, uh, and they are the kind of people who are doing the planning that Cornelius Reiters talks about. Also, at the same time, we're seeing a really encouraging inflow of new scientists, technicians, and engineers. What's been identified, and it's not just in the Department of Water Affairs, it's across the engineering sector, is a big gap in the middle. There's not enough people in the middle who can train the new incomers, who can support them and get them up to speed fast enough to, to meet the challenges. But uh, the, South Africa still retains a substantial uh, expertise distributed through organizations like CSIR uh, in the consulting industry, in the construction industry, in academia. Mm. And uh, if we pull all those resources together and get them working together, we can probably pull through. But it's, 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 a, dicey, uh, it's a dicey phase, and uh, we, we need to be very aware of, of uh, the challenges that it Dr. brings. Dr. Reiters, it, it, it's in your specific area of uh, uh, operation here. Uh, how, how desperate are we? Uh, Kolani, we are, we are very stretched in terms of uh, human resources in South Africa, uh, particularly within the civil engineering uh, uh, field. If you, if you look in, in terms of the, the book by Alison Lawless a couple of years back, in terms of numbers and figures, there you can have a, a, a really uh, a, a sense in terms of South, the, 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 the need in South Africa with regard to technical skills and, 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 and the expertise that we need, and particularly at local government level, w- w- what, what Professor Miller was referring to, where the water has to come out of the tap, you know, the, the issues of operations and maintenance and sustainability of the water to the communities is very critical. And in most cases, you have a situation where some of the uh, directors for technical services are not even uh, civil engineers or even uh, technical people.